How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel and another entry in sharing, uh, sharing the stories of my heartbreak, which is a weird way to say it, I suppose, but it is true. And it is what uh, all of these experiences led me to become who I am. At least that's what I firmly believe. And um, right now we are talking about Jill, the second girl woman I ever loved. Let's call it, odd to call her a woman. I feel like girl and woman is like when you get older, you become a woman. But when we were together, I was very much a boy. She was very much a girl. We were young and dumb. You know how that goes. Um, but the more I gave it some thought, the more I actually realized, um, even just, just like recently, uh, was that Jill was the relationship that had so many firsts involved. Um, like so many like pretty big ones too. Uh, we might as well just get the the uh, the awkwardness out of the way because it's a pretty funny story, and uh, it was the <laughs> the first time I, <laughs> I I I knew what it was like to to feel the horrific gaze of a father. <laughs> um, like I said, we were young; we weren't uh, we weren't living together yet or anything like that. But we were. How do I put this without getting too crass? We were having fun as two young adults do and <laughs> we were at Jill's house um of course she still lived with her parents nobody was home so I'll let your imagination sort of run wild with what we were getting up to playing Nintendo obviously but um it, that moment came right that moment you always fear especially as a uh, as a young boy <laughs> when you're dating a girl um, her dad came home <laughs> in the middle of the afternoon. I, this is such a, it's such a hazy, vague memory. I don't remember much before or even immediately after. Um, well, that's not true. We'll, we'll come to the after, <laughs> but it, it's, it's the, it's the during that is imprinted on my brain forever. And, um, anyway, um, needless to say the rules of the house were I wasn't supposed to be there. So into the closet with me because this was our rocket scientist brains together this was the best we could come up with uh is hide in the closet and she would try to uh talk her dad down off the ledge or whatever the metaphorical ledge oh, anyway <laughs> um the, the the thing is when i entered the closet i was in the same outfit i was wearing when i entered the world <clears throat> Let's just put it that way. And <laughs> hiding in the darkness of this closet, I remember thinking to myself, this would suck. This would suck if he found me right now. I mean, it would suck in general, but if he found me like this, it would be real bad. Um, of course, then my active imagination starts going. I'm like, I can do this. I can get out of this closet quietly enough to procure some garments and get back into the closet. Nobody will ever be the wiser. This is, this is, and it's going to be like a mission that I have to achieve, right? So I do, I slowly open the door and I'm listening and I can hear there, I don't know, down the hall in the living, I, 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 can't, I can't even remember the layout of this house. I can barely remember the layout of the bedroom. I know the closet was real damn dark and small, but I do and I sort of I exit the closet and I'm slinking across the bedroom and gathering up my belongings and slowly putting stuff on as I'm entering back into the closet. Um, and, I, and at this point now, I'm, I'm back in the closet. I'm feeling more myself <laughs> and, uh, and, it's, and it's okay and it's okay. And I'm thinking, well, this is fine. Jill will take care of it and we will, we will get away with this. We will get away. The door opens <laughs> and he is staring down at me and I I can't even imagine I'm just looking up at him I I don't even know what was said oh no I do that's I don't know what I said because I didn't say a thing I do remember him all he said to me was get out <laughs> that that was it that's all he needed to say and now we are at the end of the story I was out the door and into my Honda Prelude and down the street like a flash. I don't think I actually took off that quickly. I think Jill actually came running out afterwards and we chatted briefly. She was apologetic. I mean, it's just dumb kid stuff, but man, did that ever leave uh, an imprint on my brain? Yeah, 
Never, nothing like that ever happened again. I don't think I ever thought I could get away with nonsense like that. And now being a father, and I totally understand, sir. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that was the first time I, I learned what that sort of situation felt like. Not a situation I would recommend, honestly. Um, but at least I have the funny tale to tell, I suppose. Um, I mentioned that at the time we were not living together, but that shortly got rectified. And um, Jill was the first girl that I ever did live with. And uh, not only that, but it was the very first time I ever moved out of my parents' house as well. Didn't go far, could pretty much hit the apartment building with a rock from my parents' front steps. It's a little bit of an exaggeration, but not much. And uh, we actually, we moved in there with my best friend, Mike, actually, who has appeared here on the channel a few times. And it was the three of us living in that apartment. And um, it was, a, it honestly was a really fun time. Um, you know, you, you learn a lot about the person that you're with when you do that. What works, what doesn't work. Of course, I was, you know, it's easier for me to be sort of introspective now, being this far removed from that sort of relationship, um, to look back and, and dissect it and take it apart and realize what did work and what didn't work. At the time, I was just living my life. I was just enjoying my, well, it's youth, man, does that make me sound old? But I, I really was, right? My sense of responsibility wasn't quite there. Like I had responsibility instilled in me from my parents and my grandparents for sure, but I was still young. I had just recently gotten that car that I mentioned, my Honda Prelude. Um, I was, and I kid you not, insurance was about $333 a month on that thing. I think I had it for two months. And then I said, well, I can't afford this anymore and got rid of the car. Um, but that time in that apartment was, was really fun. And we were, again, it's almost like in a way, Mike and I were trying to recapture what it was like when I was with um, Chelsea and we had that friend dynamic on both sides and we were doing our best to do it. We had our two other guy friends still very much in our lives. And then Jill and her extended friends, they were close. They never really... I don't want to say mesh, but we never really clicked. There was no, there's no problems with the whole group when they were together, but she had two really good girlfriends that uh, were around quite a bit, but we never actually formed that bond uh, between the entire group. And I didn't really notice it at the time. Um, I was just all about being with Jill and having that relationship with her. Um, and then eventually after that apartment sort of resolved itself, we ended up moving uh, across the city. And it was the only time I ever lived in the North end of Calgary was when it was actually Mike and his dad, uh, well, his dad purchased a house and we ended up moving in with our other buddy and myself and Jill. And we lived in this house, which was really nice. Um, much bigger space, uh, it was a little bit harder of a pill to swallow for Jill and I, because both of our Mickey mouse jobs at the time, uh, she was still at A&W, as I mentioned in the last entry, I was working at a place called the Legion as a line cook, uh, but it was, again, it was in the South End. So her and I, for a period of time there when I didn't have a car, um, cause I got rid of that very expensive little sports car, we were doing uh, city transit. And from where we were to where we had to go, it was two trains and a bus most of the time. Um, other way around, bus, two trains, doesn't matter. But that definitely added some stress to the relationship for sure. And I really learned what it was like to sort of have space and live with other people. And when you're in a relationship, I guess, again, I didn't really realize that at the time I was probably just frustrated by it more than anything. Um, it, I started, you know, like butting heads with Mike and our other buddy because of issues that Jill would have. And of course, she didn't want to bring it up. And now you've got this situation where I'm kind of this go-between and I'm trying to appease everybody. And that definitely added some stress. But it was all, you know, it was all because we were living together and we were in these more confined spaces. And we were all so young, still finding our way, figuring out what we wanted. It always sounds so good at the offset or at the outset, I should say. Yeah, we're going to live together. No, no rules. We're going to live on our own. I mean, that's it. You're just, you've, you've entered that phase of your life. I shouldn't say no rules, but you've entered that phase of your life where it's just fun now. You're finally getting to be an adult, even though I don't really think any of us were at the time. Mike was the most adult out of all of us. I'm 100%. I don't know if you listened to this or not, buddy, but you were still are, I think. Um, but that was, uh, it was, it was, I look back on it as a very positive learning experience of what it was like to live with somebody that you are in love with. Um, I think in retrospect, I probably wouldn't have done it with my best friend because I wouldn't wanted, I don't want to, or I wouldn't have wanted to actively ins install that 
stress between myself and my friend over myself and my girlfriend at the time, right? Um, but I'm sure my, Mike and I had spent many times discussing how we wanted to live together at some point, and I was always the one with a girlfriend, so obviously I was going to come with that. <laughs> but again, like I said, it was a great learning experience and uh, another another of many firsts. Um, we should switch gears here and talk about something that I'm not proud of at all. Um, but believe me when I say it does or it did come from a place of genuine empathy and 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 care. And, and it wasn't until many years later, looking back, that I realized, yeah, that was a mistake, and I shouldn't have done that. I definitely crossed a line. Um, <laughs> I wasn't so far past the line that the line was a dot to me. But we uh, we ended up going grad camping again. This was Jill's grad with her her friends, and they were graduating. And Mike and I ended up going camping with them. I believe we actually went to Mount Kid, which if you watch all of my videos, Lindsay and Sadie and I were camping there last year. We're probably going back later this year as well. But that's where we went and did um, Jill's grad camping. It was, it was lots of fun. Nobody had any interest in doing that huge group where it's like all of the graduates. This was a very much a, a private camping trip that we just went. We got our own site and it's just, you know, you pick up a bunch of booze, you go into the bush, you have a fire, you camp. I don't even think, I think there was one tent and other people were sleeping in their cars. I think in total there was myself, Mike, Jill, her two friends, and one of those friends had, had, a, had a boyfriend as well. So I think it was like a total of six of us on that trip. Um, maybe... Maybe our other buddy was there too, and I apologize. I can't quite remember. But the whole point of it, of the story, is that one night, fueled by booze and being a young <sighs> gentleman, but kind of a slime ball, I guess, in, in a way. Um, I remember Jill laughed with one of her friends. They were going to use the washroom, and her other friend you know, fairly on the way to the nighttime, had been spending the evening sort of complaining about how, you know, she can't get a boyfriend and no guys like her, this, that, and the other thing. Just silly, again, silly young people stuff. But I took it upon myself to, to say the words, if I wasn't with Jill, well, I would date you. I would be with you. That is ill-advised. Don't do that. <laughs> Um, one, it's a, it, it might come from a place of genuine care for the person you're saying it to just to make them feel better. Um, but it can also be taken so many wrong ways. And especially when your girlfriend at the time is within earshot. Um, yeah, that was a harsh lesson to learn that you just, when you're with somebody, there's certain lines you should and shouldn't cross. I'm not talking about like the obvious lines, but that very much upset Jill. And at the time, I couldn't understand that. And it created this huge fight. I do remember that. Um, but looking back on it now, I completely empathize with how that would have made Jill feel. Um, I was learning. I was feeling my way out and, and figuring everything else out and how to behave and how not to behave and and this that and the other thing not not proud of it um but it, it was a harsh lesson to learn for sure one other little thing that wasn't like this huge thing but she but jill was the first person i ever went to like nightclubs with and now nightclubs you can either take them or leave them for me i leave them um and i learned very quickly that that does not that is that was not an environment that was conducive to how matthew feels um, uh, I would absolutely say there was jealousy involved, but all, all of it was stemmed from a, a simple desire to not be in those sorts of locations. That was never my scene. And of course, I am now with somebody who uh, really enjoys that stuff. I, I remember a few times going with Jill and Mike and a couple other friends to these bloody nightclubs in Calgary. And it's just, it was, it was never my scene, man. It's just people bumping up against each other, music so loud you can't hear yourself think, drinks that, well, were less expensive then than they probably are now, were still far too expensive. Um, you could always, I would always have a better time grabbing a six pack or grabbing a bottle and just being in a quiet social environment as opposed to those <laughs> may right uh, i learned that very quickly she was the first person i went with and i learned um obviously i didn't learn that quickly because it happened more than once but there was one night too where i just i got so mad about just seeing her on the dance floor with her friends and other guys out there. Nothing was happening. Everything was on the up and up. But again, in my in my youthful brain, I was I was infuriated by that. But it was probably because I was uncomfortable being there. You know, I learned that this is the kind of extracurricular activity that is not for me. 
you can't take that lesson when it is happening to you and apply it and be like, hey, well, I can't do this then. You, you love the person and you, you stay with them and you wait for the real shit to hit the fan before you make any sort of call, right? But it, it did teach me quickly. It's a small lesson, but when it's... Um, it's all, it's one of the, it's just, it's, it's one of many lessons that you learn from being with people. And it sucks that we sort of allow ourselves to subject ourselves to those sorts of things in order to learn these lessons, right? Because it was just, I just, I hated them. I hated the clubs with such a passion. I hated the atmosphere. I would have been better off just staying at home. But for whatever reason, maybe I was just trying to keep her happy and going and doing these things with her. Um, I look back now and I'm like, yeah, that's probably the moment where my subconscious latched onto you need to be honest with what you do and what you do not like. Because at the end of the day, if it's going to make you feel these ways, it's probably more important to yourself to not do those things, right? And to really take a minute, take a step back and think about what it is that you are actually doing and what you're willing to sort of compromise for another person. And again, it's a silly example because it's just about a night going like going out to a dance club um but that sort of lesson not putting yourself into a situation for another human being that really makes that uncomfortable can be applied to so many other things where we do to ourselves when we are in a couple and it was the relationship with jill that taught me it wasn't until after it came to an end and I had a nice conversation with my father about it all, that I realized that Jill was also the very first time I learned what it was like to completely and utterly lose yourself and how you identify your self-worth as a human being. And that ain't a good thing. But that's also better saved for next time.